Hello guys, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts and a video where I'm in a little bit of a better frame of mind to give you an idea of the process of this following up on my first video that I just showed you and what I have learned in this process. Now, I made a video a couple days ago and I said, you know, I'm going to tear this apart. This thing's got no transmit out. It's got an issue. Uh, I had it set up as a 10 meter beacon and it lasted about four days. So, you know, I got my 7300, my 7100, and 706, whatever, but I figured, you know what, it's time to take this apart. And I had a good notion that I knew what the hell I was doing. But obviously, a couple of commenters said, you know, I applaud your effort, but really, get with the program, get a block di uh, diagram, schematic, some test gear, and go piece by piece and find out what's wrong with it. And you know what? They're right. So, I learned, that I taught myself all weekend on how this works, and I figured I'd give you a rundown real quick on what I taught myself. So I had my service monitor down here with my probe. I don't even know where this came from. I've been dying to use it. I've had my fluke up here, and it even gave me a reason to bust out my little smart tweezers that I had made a video on several years ago where you could just take these things and, you know, test little things on the board, and it'll tell you exactly what the value is and what it is and stuff. So anyways... To show you what this is doing, I'm going to turn this on, all right, and it receives, I don't think I have, yeah, I got it hooked up, but no, I got it in a dummy load. Okay, so it receives, but of course, when you hit the tune button, nothing happens, get an antenna blinking, you hit the transmit, nothing's happening, and of course, zero power output. So my notion was this thing's not even switching in the transmit, because you know, if you have bad finals or whatever, you still see something, some sort of erratic or voltage changing or whatever. So here's what I've learned, though. Someone said, grab a block diagram, as you see on this picture here. And they said, get the service manual and go through and learn and step by step find out what's going on to isolate the problem, the proper way to do it. And they're absolutely correct. So here's what I've learned. This is the PA unit, okay? On the right, you have your PA section, so it takes your signal, amplifies it to your 100 watts, sends it over to the low-pass filters over here. This is your low-pass filter section, your tuner's underneath, and then it switches in the tuner in line after the PA, after the low-pass filters, it goes to the tuner and back. So here's what happens. Your signal comes in here. This is your frequency, okay, that comes into the board from your microprocessor or wherever, IF, it goes into the board and it goes into this exciter section. So you have it going into one here, which goes into two. So you have a you know, driver section. So it, it brings it up to probably five watts, I guess, five, ten watts. And that comes out of the transformer here. Then it goes into your final output, your final output transformers or transistors, excuse me. Final output transistors. These are Mitsubishi RD100 HHF ones. You gotta watch on eBay, there's a lot of counterfeits. You gotta really order from a reputable place. So then it comes out of the output transformer right here on each side. At that point, it goes on the board through this relay and it goes into this relay, into this relay, and it starts switching it through the low pass filters to the appropriate ones. You can see on the left here, they're labeled, you know. Uh, this is uh, 17 and 15 meters, this is uh, 80 meters, this is. 30 and 14, or 30 and 20 meters, so it switches in the appropriate bandpass filters, and it comes out and goes to the relay here, and it goes through what I think this is a coupling capacitor, is what it's labeled as, I think. Then it goes to your transmit, receive, switching relay, and then to a couple of the relays here, which is for switching the, tr the tuner in and out, and that. So, here's what I've learned. In the block diagram, well first, I had my meter going, right? and I was testing for voltages per the service manual for bias and all that and you may have already spotted this you may have already spotted that resistor this is a bias resistor which is pretty black now I smoked that by accident after going through all this then I tried a couple other things and I saw the smoke come off of it but regardless I started testing the voltages at like the the collector is this thing on? No. Okay you know, at the, the the collector and the base and all that, you know, made sure I had the appropriate voltages that I have, right, 
down here on the, you know, emitter and collector and all that. So I had my voltages here and said, okay. And then you have to test for current drain and all that. So what I realized was in the block diagram, turn this off. Okay. In the block diagram, right after the low pass filter section going towards the tuner, there's a little tiny speck of glitter here, which represents a diode. Now it may be this one, or it may be this little one here. I don't even know if you can see that. It's small, man. But anyways, right off of this capacitor, this, what I think is labeled as a capacitor, a coupler, off of this, after this relay on the block diagram, there is a forward and reverse power protection circuit in that section right there. And that's telling the radio, hey, there's an infinite SWR, shut down the PA. So it was gunky and rusty up here, so I did clean that and attempted to scrub that up, which came out pretty clean. But the damage may already be done. So I had already popped out these relays. I tested the relays. Okay, the relays were fine. Uh, you can see my abortion here at the SO239. That's a pain to get that thing out and in. There's not a lot of room to work in there. Um, you have to kind of put tension on that thing and pull on it with the board unscrewed. And, you know, how do you unsolder three things at one time? You know, I, I didn't have my wick or anything. but So I had this board out like four times. But anyways, so right in this section, there's something that's shutting down the PA, telling it that it's a, an infinite SWR to shut down the PA for protection. So that's why it's not even transmitting zero watts, and there's nothing coming out. So the next thing I did was I took off right after the output, right after the output transformer, before it goes into here. I took these off, unsoldered them, and looked on my service monitor and saw signal coming out of this. So I assumed at that point that I had... Uh, current drain and I had signal on here that before this circuit is in I have output here so that you know with my reading online and learning there's no dead short on these finals and you really should take these out of circuit when you want to test these but after doing all this I made the assumption that I was getting some sort of RF out here but with it in line it's shutting it down so what I'm looking at right now is this PA board is no good. Uh, another thing is you may notice that there's a couple screws missing. So when I had this board out multiple times, if I were to lay the board back in, just lay it on there, connect what I need, and turn it on, I would get four, eight, nine watts coming out. It was weird. Uh, I guess once I screw these finals down to the heat sink and ground everything out, that's when I get zero watts. So. Maybe there's a shorts all over the board, and once I ground the board out, I'm not sure how that works. But I know that when I didn't have the board and all the finals strapped down and screwed down and everything, uh, it was it was putting out some sort of power out of here. And the tuner would try to fire, um, you know, I hit the tuner, and it would start tuning, and then it would come up and beep like there's a high SWR. But um, once I screwed it all back in, nothing. So there must be something that's going to ground or whatever. But the bottom line is this. I know I'm not as smart as a lot of you guys out there. And, you know, I'm not claiming I am a radio expert by any means. Okay? What I'm saying is that this process, I learned a lot about a block diagram and the different stages of the amplifier. Because in reality, <clears throat> this, C Oops. this CB amp that I showed you last week in the video, this thing's got the almost the exact... Same kind of PA like this. Now those don't have the low pass filters. They're made for like one band. They have a toroid or two or whatever. But it's got the same thing. It's got a driver section and then it's got a, you know, or or if it's a, you know, a high drive, you're driving it with your radio and there is no driver section in those CV amps. But it's got essentially the same thing. So now I learned about the different sections of the PA, where it goes in the block diagram and where my problem would be. Now, I can't get in there and fix those little tiny dots or specks of glitter, but I know that that's where my issue is, and I taught myself that. So, can I fix that? Probably not, but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try to get, if it's cheap enough, a new PA board, 
And when I get the PA board, I'll take these finals out of this one and I will test them again to make sure that the finals are good and I can put these finals in the new board um, and uh, hopefully readjust it. You got to readjust, you know, align it with your bias voltages so that they match on both sides. Very important because what I do know is if the bias voltages are off on one side, one transistor will work harder than the other. And also, you always want to do these in matched pairs. So if you get one blown transistor and radio or an amp or anything, you really should do both of them or four of them or however they're blown as sets um, so that they're matched pairs so that one's not working harder than the other. But that's where I'm at on this 450. I'm going to put it in the closet for now. And uh, at least my I learned something from making my own video. So hopefully you're not afraid to look into something like this and learn. And i got a lot of learning to do. I'm not... Uh, an expert by any means but uh, I have a lot of learning to do and this was a fun thing to learn so at least it's not dead in the water the thing still turns on so it's halfway there but 7-3 guys thanks for watching KJ for YZI